Welcome, Welcome to, to the this... climate. Welcome to the solar project. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the solar, solar project. project. Mobilizing hearts and minds to battle the climate emergency. And this is my dad, Craig Wolf. And this is my daughter, Angela Summers. In today's video, we're going to learn about the fundamentals of climate change and global warming. So, let's get going. So, we're going to start with a Chinese symbol, which is actually two symbols, which stand for crisis. The symbol on the left is danger, and the symbol on the right is opportunity. And that perfectly describes what we're looking at with the climate emergency. We are in extreme danger if we stay the course and do nothing. But if we take action, we have tremendous opportunity for a future of clean, safe, and renewable energy. That's where we want to go. So, let's start looking at what the facts are about what causes global warming. This is looking at the Earth's horizon from space. You can see the gentle curve of the horizon, and that blue area is the atmosphere. Carl Sagan used to tell us that if you look at a globe, like the ones in our classroom, and you paint that globe with lacquer, that the thickness of that lacquer relative to the size of the globe is about the same as the thickness of our Earth's atmosphere relative to the size of our Earth. So it is very thin and it is very fragile. We could not survive without it. So here we are looking at the sun and our atmosphere. Now in this depiction, the thickness of the atmosphere is actually larger than it actually is. It's actually thinner than that, but if it was as thin as it actually is, you wouldn't be able to see it. So, let's take a look and see what happens. We have the sun's energy in the form of shortwave radiation passing through the atmosphere of the Earth, and that warms the Earth. That's a good thing. And some of that energy reflects back into outer space. That's a good thing. And we have some of that energy that is trapped by our atmosphere called the greenhouse effect and that's also a good thing now with this next slide let's take a look at our atmosphere it thickened up and we also now have more energy that's being reflected back to the earth that is what is causing global warming and the climate crisis there are many sources of greenhouse gases there's coal mining there's industrial processes the big one is coal plants. There's also thawing permafrost, letting methane into the atmosphere, air travel, oil production, crop burning, fertilization, forest burning, land transportation, landfills, and industrial agriculture. <sighs> so, there are lots of things that are putting greenhouse gases into our atmosphere. And here we see that starting in 1850, carbon emissions from fossil fuels have dramatically spiked. And what we've learned is that as those greenhouse gases increase, so do our temperatures. So what we're looking at here is how CO2 has spiked over the last few decades. In fact, right now we're actually up over 400 parts per million. Historically, we used to hover around 280 parts per million, and scientists tell us that we actually need to get back to 350 parts per million, hence the name of Bill McKibben's organization, 350.org. 90% of that extra heat is captured by our oceans, and if you look at the ocean temperature increase over time, we see a spike in ocean temperatures. Scientists tell us that increasing temperatures in our oceans will result in more extreme storms. For many of us, we saw this with Hurricane Sandy, the giant storm that hit New York. 
This giant storm was 1,500 miles across. What is the linkage between the climate crisis and the frequency of extreme weather events? It is actually something pretty simple. It's the hydrological cycle. So we have evaporation, which then turns into precipitation, and then that water returns to the sea, and the cycle starts all over again. That's the hydrological cycle. And what is the result of this? We have bigger and harder downpours, simultaneously causing longer and deeper droughts. So we have evaporation from the ocean that goes into the atmosphere, increases even more. As air gets warmer, it can hold more water vapor. Heavy downpours get even heavier, causing more flooding. Snowpacks melt earlier in the year, leading to more spring flooding and less water in the heat of the summer. And let's take a look at these last two. There are longer intervals in drought-stricken areas between downpours, making droughts even worse, and more water also evaporates more quickly from the soil, making droughts deeper and longer still. As a result, 17 of the 18 hottest years on record have been since 2001. And the four hottest years ever have been the last four years. One of the most undeniable signs that we have a warming of the planet is that our glaciers are melting. Here's a glacier in 1936 in Greenland. And here is that glacier today. As global temperatures continue to rise, the Earth's water cycle intensifies even more. As a result, we're getting these extreme weather events. In Houston, Texas in 2015, they were hit by an enormous flood. And then again in 2016, 20 inches of rain fell in two days, and then Hurricane Harvey wreaks havoc in Texas in 2017. Hurricane Irma blasts all of Florida in 2017, followed two weeks later by Maria, which devastated Puerto Rico. And this is happening all over the planet. In Chile, in France, in Georgia near Russia, in Germany, in China, in Japan, and in India. And then the other side of the coin, rather than extreme flooding, we have extreme drought. Brazil experienced a severe drought. 140 cities were forced to ration their water and nearly one fifth of their population was affected by the drought. California is also experiencing extreme drought. This is Folsom Lake in normal times and then this is Folsom Lake in 2014, when they really began to worry about the status of their water supply. But we're also experiencing an energy revolution. This is an unusual slide of a solar panel on a hut in Sudan. Actually, that solar panel can charge their phones and charge an LED light, changing their lives dramatically. So just like we saw bad things happening all over the planet for water and drought, we're also experiencing all over the planet good things in terms of solar energy in Pakistan, in Germany, where they got 78% of their electricity from solar on July 25th, 2015, in Chile, in Bolivia, in Costa Rica got 100% of their energy over 100 straight days, and in Honduras, where they are poised to take over the lead from Mexico in Latin America. And of course, in the Vatican, they are also 100% renewable, but they do have two things on their side. They are very small, and they do have God on their side. More good news. Wind can supply worldwide electricity consumption 40 times over. And this is an amazing statistic. In one hour... The sun provides enough solar energy to power the earth for a full year. So we do have amazing news, but we also have solutions at hand. But first, we must put a price on carbon in the markets. And we also must put a price on denial in politics. 
Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Thank you, Margaret Mead. So, we need to keep 70 to 80 percent of the known fossil fuel reserves in the ground to stay below a 2 degrees Celsius temperature rise. And we also need to keep guys like this from making decisions for future generations, our children and our grandchildren. The climate emergency is a moral issue. We need to move to wind power, solar power, hydro energy, and geothermal. And we're back to the symbol for crisis, danger, and opportunity. Subscribe to our channel, The Solar Project, as we mobilize hearts and minds to battle the climate emergency. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. You too can play a part in solving this emergency. So, let none of us be timid. Let all of us decide to act. We'll see you again next week. Thank you for joining the Solar Project. And we also want to say thank you to our sponsor, the Heartland Renewable Energy Society, working every day to build a clean, safe, and renewable energy future.